Hey, Michael, I am so excited for 2025. Why is that? We've got so much cool stuff on the books already. We've got, uh, we've already got a big ride that we're doing. We've got a bunch of interviews coming up. We've got our golfing trip coming up. We just oh, yeah. a lot of cool stuff already on the schedule for 2025. You're right. We have already been putting in a lot of work to get some really interesting interviews, a uh, couple of new ideas for content. It's it, it's going to be a good year. You're right. You know, and people are always asking us how they can join in or participate or or just follow along. And I think we've got some ways they could do that. Absolutely. They could continue to listen or to watch us or listen and watch us. Uh, that would be huge. We really, really appreciate that. And, you know, if you've got some friends who are interested in what we talk about, get them to listen or, and or watch. Absolutely. You know, we do have, um, we're going to do other rides, but we do have one big ride so far in the books, which is Bragg, Big Bragg 2025. Mm -hmm. And if you want to join us, you can go to Bragg, B-R-A-G dot org, Bragg dot org, sign up for Big Bragg 2025. Upon registration, pull down to Cycling Men and Women of Leisure. We're looking to have a large team again. Last two years, we've had the largest team. We like largest to keep that going. Teams. So, um uh, that's right. Join the team. The other thing you could do is participate in our, you know, podcast. And by that, I mean, you know, send in your guesses for listener spotlight. We, a lot of people are doing that. We'd like more people to send in guesses for that. Um, send in content ideas. If you got something you, you think would be interesting for us to cover, certainly do that. Um, any number of, of those things uh, just to get yourself involved. Also, tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. We want to hear from you. Well, they we know they love the debrim. That is for sure. So uh, we'll see. And, <laughs> I'm sure the debrim is not liked by all. But, um, you know, the last thing uh, I think for this round we mentioned is a donation. And and when I say the word donation, I, I sometimes cringe. But at the same time, we've had a few that have made some donations. We've had uh, yeah. few, a couple people that have, have become monthly donation uh, subscribers. And we've got... Uh, a couple that have made a one-time donation and we, we love you all. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you could do that. Um, from our podcast platform, you can go to www.cyclingmenofleisurepodcast.com. There's a link there that says support the show. And for little as $3 a month, you could support the show. And that helps us out with items such as the platform or spreading the word or pushing it out to different podcast platforms. You can also go to our website at cyclingmenofleisure.com. There's a link there where you can do like a one-time donation or even a monthly donation for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, there's a link right there. So any and all uh, is accepted and welcome and appreciated uh, to help us keep the cause going. And call takers are standing by now. No, they're really not. <laughs> well, if we have call takers, that would be cool. <laughs> Here, let's see if we could add one in here. Let's see what I can do here. Let's see about this. Hello, I'm looking to support the Cycling Man of Leisure. Well, how much were you thinking about donating? Let's get that guy off the Well, listen, we thought we had a couple of callers lined up, but uh, listen, we just would love for you to join us in 2025. Um just send us your ideas and, and uh, participate in the way that you want to participate. Absolutely. Well, it's time for Road Adventures with Cycling Men of Leisure, the podcast for cyclists who understand that riding is not just about getting to the destination, but the experience along the way. Now, here are the original Cycling Men of Leisure, Adam and Michael. Hey, good to be with you, sir. Happy to be with you again, Adam. How are you? Doing good. Um, uh, you know, I, I have an update. I'm going to assume that you have an update on your bicycle, which if you have an update, that means you actually went out and braved the horrible road construction and got it to the shop. Well, I would like to say that it actually is horrible road construction, but I did. 
I did do it. So the football game was at 3.30 here in the in Ann Arbor area. And I said, the bike shop opens up at 11. I'm going to leave my house, go get a coffee. Was, it, was, was that the Michigan State game? No. Are you kidding? <laughs> are you are you kidding? That guy's in so much trouble right now. Uh, I mean, the university just saved themselves $80 million over there in Lansing. Lansing just can't stay out of trouble. Now, by the way, to be fair, University of Michigan got themselves in trouble too. But uh, currently – Anyway, coaches, you, got, you got your coffee. Yeah, I got my coffee and, and uh, headed on down and braved the construction. And I made it to the shop about 10.56, and I walked in. And the guy says, uh, how can I help you today? And I said, I'm here for my for my pre-diagnoses. Now, do you want to take any guesses for the pre-diagnoses? There was a lot of people saying a lot of things. I'm going to say you had to have things realigned and readjusted. I don't think the bottom bracket was broken. I think okay. it just needed to be realigned and cleaned. So what we had was we had three things after the gentleman put it up on the on the rack. I don't think he put them <laughs> up on the rack, but in the bike stand. It sounds better to put it up on the rack. So um, so what we had was a rear tire that had a pretty massive groove in it that I never really noticed in Iowa. Uh, we kept looking to see if there's anything from the noises. And what we're talking about is 500 miles my bicycle made some awful noises and it literally started like 20 miles into to to ragbri and 500 uh, miles of the squeaking duck oh man all i think about is shawshank redemption andy <laughs> dufresne yeah andy Climb dufresne through. climbed through 500 yeah. <laughs> of the most foul smelling okay anyway so um but yes my bike literally and it would be really weird because if you pedal on one side of the bike there would be no noise if you pedal on the other side of the bike there would be noise if you were coasting down a hill and you had the crank set at a one area, there would be no noise. If you had the crank set at the other area, or where your left foot was all the way down, it would be a noise. Right foot all the way down, no noise. And so it was just really weird. I couldn't pinpoint it. And I kept adjusting the brakes, like moving it. And anyway, so took the bike in, and we have three things. The rear tire had a pretty nasty groove in it, meaning it was rubbing against something. So what the gentleman said is, why don't we check out your rear hub? Why don't we see about that? He said, I'm feeling some massive friction here. I think it might be the rear hub. I don't think it's the bottom bracket. And I said, okay. He said, but will you give me permission if we get into it? And it is the bottom bracket. And I thought that was a silly question, but that's okay. Because I thought to myself, no, I'm just going to let you have it and not <laughs> fix it. But, but I decided, okay, this is one of those moments. Just shut your mouth. He's got your bike. And, and, and he said, but the gentleman was honest with me and said, um, He's like, my mechanic who does all this won't be back till Tuesday. Can we wait till Tuesday? So that was the pre-diagnosis. But now I have the official update because we are recording this on Tuesday. And on my way home, the mechanic called me. And now I have the official. Do you want to take a guess? Uh, I'm sticking with what I said. I, 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 I I don't think it was enough that your bottom bracket would be completely destroyed i just really think it needed to be cleaned and adjusted well i will tell you that the gentleman on my way home today replaced the bottom bracket and said that it was Ah. completely toast to the point where i was one ride away from possibly seizing up according to him if it wasn't one ride it was a couple rides away from seizing up but you're not wrong about, I just want to be fair, about the cleaning and adjusting because they took the entire rear hub apart um, and it was pretty loaded with grime and grease and needed to be cleaned up and adjusted. So um, it's a little bit of both. It's it's bottom bracket and rear hub uh, cleaning. But I know that I've reached, I've gotten some messages behind the scenes on what it was and um apologize for being a slacker and not getting it down fast enough but um ed had texted me behind the scenes and said what is it so uh, ed is finding out right now as he's listening that surprise was, ed you were yeah, you're so, right isn't that what he said it was ed texted me right away and said that he had done a ride and he said that it, he actually had a sound clip that he sent me and said that it sound like this i said yeah it was pretty close so ed 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 <laughs> ed was our ed nailed it so um 
But yes, so I'm um, going to have to go pick that up, I think, Saturday morning. Um, so watch out for that road construction. Ah, listen, buddy, you're more than welcome to check out the Flex Lane Road Construction on US 23. I'm not, I'm not, I'll even be honest where it is. It's, it's six mile and 23. So go ahead and look, big guy. <laughs> I'm just so. saying road construction is not an excuse not to take your bike to the shop. Well, that's all I'm saying. I choose to use a bike shop. That's in Ann Arbor. As you know, I live about 20 miles north of 15 miles, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on the day. Um, and sometimes it's not as easy to get back and forth. Like, ah, I'll go there on the weekend. And then, of course, that golf course sure was calling me on the weekend. Hmm. You liked priority. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I haven't been like you. I've been, I'm pretty proud whoa, of you. Whoa, I'm what pretty you proud of you. You've got out of some rides and done some rides. So I have. Uh, I don't know. That's what I assume based upon giving me as much crap for not. <laughs> We're going with exactly what you said. Good now Good doing a lot of riding. So Good job. appreciate okay. you acknowledging that. Well, anyway, so there we go. Uh, 250 bucks and my bike is going to be back to, to what it was. But uh, listen, I'm excited. Uh, I've, I have 16, almost 17,000 miles on the bike. It's 10 years old. And the, this is the second time the bottom bracket's been done, so I'm excited. I think for Kentucky, when we go down, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Well, or, I'm excited. I don't have to listen to the squeaking duck. Or for miles. the weather's not good. Miles. The bike will sit in the back of the van, and I'll sit underneath the underneath the awning of your camper and enjoy myself a bourbon. Hey, so. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. It's win win either way. <laughs> well, well, some exciting excitement going on here on the show. All right. I'm listening because I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after a quick break. You know, about, I don't know, a couple months ago, we talked to Katie up in Carroll, yes. Iowa. She was on the committee that organized, uh, the event coming through their town. They were a, a, a stopover town for Ragbri, 50th anniversary. We talked to her and she gave us kind of a behind the scenes look at what all they were doing. And, and that uh, I was able to get her back. That's and awesome. You and I did, in fact, uh, interview her. We did. And I am excited to play that interview because what we thought would be great is what is the aftermath of 30, 40,000, whatever the number is people coming through your town of 10,000, how'd it turn out? Was it a mess? Was there, you know, did you spend two weeks picking up trash and I don't know, replacing divots and whatever else might've occurred. So. And the answer is yes. So anyways, next, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Moving on. Uh, why don't we, why don't we, uh, why don't we pipe that up here and, and uh, we'll bring Katie on now. Cool. Hey, Katie, good to be with you again. Hey, guys, thanks. Hey, good to see you. Um, it's it's been a been a few weeks, and you look well. So I'm guessing you have survived Ragbri fiftieth. Did you I've sell survived. enough beer? That's what I want to know. Did you sell you enough know, beer? Is, there's a lot of a lot of things we could talk about, but yeah, okay, we, great. We didn't sell as much as we thought we would sell, but yes, we sold plenty. So good. It, it good. worked out well for us. Was there an after party party with um, the extra or? There hasn't been yet. Last oh. time they did, they did have one, but we actually, we have a Budweiser distributor in town. Oh. And so they did a really awesome job. They had their, all their guys working in a cold reefer truck right there. So they did a really good job monitoring. Okay. We can put this out and you know they didn't overload the coolers cool they didn't have too okay. much extra so that was okay well that's good they did a really good job helping with that um you know because at the end of the night you don't want those troughs of ice full of beer yeah no. maybe but <laughs> okay you know. well we answered all the questions excellent no i'm, all right. I'm kidding <laughs> well we, we're kind of sad for for all of our listeners yes. and subscribers when we got 
too, Carol. We did look for someone in a green shirt, and we asked for you. And I think you were at the high school at the time that we were in the main area. Um, and then Pizza Ranch was right behind your your booth there. And so yep. wouldn't you know it, air conditioning and, and pizza and, and ice buffet. water and the yeah. buffet kind of kind of won for a little bit. And then when we came back out. It was uh, toasty, so we we enjoyed your library there in air conditioning. So <laughs> I I actually have heard so many people that have gone to the library or went to the library that day and said it was awesome. So and the you librarian have the had a blast. Coolest library there. Yeah. I, I mean, it's really awesome the way you've got like those big steps where you can kind of set and it's got the movie screen that they can you know yeah. it's just beautiful and it was nice and cool, so that made it even better. That's that's what I heard. So I that really I. I wasn't expecting that, but that turned out to be a really neat thing to have, especially with the heat. And it kind of oh, just yeah. was right there in the grass with the trees. So you had some shade outside and awesome. Yeah, it, was it was really neat. So tell me, if you don't mind, the expectation of ridership, the riders that you thought that you would see. Was it what you thought you would see? Yeah. I've, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like when you, it, it was really funny. Um, so the way my day went, I spent, I started out the morning on Monday at the high school, which is where the main rake ride campground was. So at 6 a.m., that's when I started my day. And I would say from 6 to 7, it was like quiet. So I was just getting everything out, set up. And then all of a sudden that first question or support vehicle came in at 7. And it was like nonstop until bedtime. Like wow. It just was, it was absolutely crazy the amount of of people in town. And the weird thing is I spent most of my day out at the high school, probably until about six or six 30. And then I headed down to the celebration area or where the band was. And so I, I honestly didn't really drive around town and see everything. I get, you know, you see it in pieces and you see the steady flow of bikers, but to, to truly grasp what the town looked like, I didn't really take in. And my sister was staying here and she drove around town and took video of all the different places, the parks where there's just tense galore. And I'm just like, so I got to see that after the fact. And that's wow. Well, and and I'll say that you were, you're uh, geographically, if anyone doesn't realize you were on the front end of the route. And so throughout the week, people were dissipating and leaving uh, the mm-hmm. ride. And mm-hmm. so you were still in the very hot thick of things where it was still a very massive uh, cycle load, in my opinion. So, I mean, Absolutely. yeah, you would think that there would be a break in of some sort, you know, where maybe just there would be no cyclists coming. And that was not the case. <laughs> there might be a break where there was like maybe, oh, there's only two or three coming in the next 30 seconds. But then it was another wave of, 15 to 20. It was just solid. I, 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 I was blown away really. So, so Michael, um, I have to give the credit to Michael. He had said, you know, we really need to catch back up with Katie and see, you know, we've obviously talked to people before the ride and then we do the ride and then people just go, okay, ride, ride 50 is over. Um, and it was kind of really neat because even today, Ragbri put out an email that said, relive your Ragbri 50 experience, share your picture. So talking to you today is is just really uh, awesome, in my opinion, because here we are asking, um, and kudos to you again, Michael. I mean, after everyone's left, normally the cyclists clean up after themselves. I mean, did you have a big old mess or? No, it was That's me. Awesome. And, and- Good. I can say this is the first rig where I've been part of like the planning committee or doing anything on that end. My day Tuesday started at 5 a.m. I got out to the high school and all I could see was little headlamps, you know, and hear the zippers <laughs> of the tents. And it was a steady stream of people leaving. And by 9 30 or 10, I mean, it was a ghost town. The garbage was either all picked up or it was all in at least bags and piles right by the cans that were coming to be picked up. The signs were down. I mean, I think at 11 o'clock I went and ate lunch and people are like, you wouldn't know anything happened here last night. Like, you wouldn't. It was that's so amazing. Cool Cause I thought, Oh, you again, you spend seven months preparing the weeks before setting up and then, Oh, well, 
it's done. July 26th at 11 o'clock. It's just, it was amazing. The writers are so respectful. Yeah, there's just no sign of it even being here. That's well, that's, so, that's, that's awesome. cool because we've often talked on many different rides about, you know, we look at ourselves as, as trying to be very uh, conscientious of going through these towns, um, you know, and cleaning up after ourselves and picking up after ourselves. And most of the time, you know, we see that happening, but we've always wondered, is that really happening? Or when we leave, are yes. we just oblivious and there's just trash everywhere that we didn't no. even see. So I'm glad to hear that we're cleaning up after ourselves. When we come that's, through your towns and aren't, aren't trashing them or anything like that. That's no, awesome. It, I, uh, from the North end of town to the South end, it was, it was very simple. It was picked up. If the garbages were full, like I said, the garbage was set next to the can. It wasn't garbage all route like the main campground that we'd have to go pick up piece by piece it was that, it was very clean so that's, very clean. that's awesome very good so we know that brag bright presented i believe a check of 20 grand 20, or 20 yeah, a little over twenty thousand. a little over twenty thousand. Yeah. cool and so is that money earmarked for a special project or just to help out just in general um so with the community fund um, we knew that they were going to make a donation this whole time. We didn't know how much we knew it was up to our planning committee to decide which organization or organizations we wanted that to go to in our town. Um, and we honestly had a pretty easy time deciding both schools. Uh, we asked a lot of throughout the process, uh, you know, the main campground being at our the Carroll High School and Middle School, um, Pork Belly Ventures utilized Fairview and elementary school. Um, we actually have two schools in our town. We have a public school and a Catholic school. And so then you have St. Lawrence, they served a meal. Um, Kemper, their field house hosted a team, their high school hosted a team, they had food and showers. And so we felt right off the bat, those two, the two school districts were going to split. And then the last group that we kind of just thought about tail end, and I don't know why, but was um, the American Legion or cool. town American Legion. Oh, nice. And so those three organizations, all of them do a lot for our community all year round. And so that's how we landed on those three. So we split it three ways. Did really the, cool. did the owner of the Culver's that he survive <laughs> the, the weekend? I mean, cause, cause there was the big sun, the sun shades there. Yeah. And then people would go into Culver's for a little bit to get, you know, maybe some custard or whatever. Or, and we walked in one time, our buddy wanted a, a custard or ice cream or whatever. And the line was like a U shape around the back of the building. And I was like, I hope that guy made it alive out for the day. Yeah, he, so. would, he was uh, ground zero. <laughs> I know. And the funny thing is every time I would see him leading up to the event, I was joked. I'm like, have you decided yet? Are you locking your doors and just keeping your drive through <laughs> open? Are you gonna are you gonna unlock and let people in? He's like, oh, I don't know. I gotta decide. <laughs> and I was like, I know what you'd want to do, obviously from an E standpoint, but he's like, I just can't do that to people. He's an awesome yeah. guy. That's so, awesome. No, that he was, was excited, cool. graciously said, you know, because you know, we do ask, we asked him to close off that parking lot at noon that day. And uh obviously. He had a pretty good idea what the day was going to turn out okay for yeah. him. You know, uh, yeah, he was ready and willing. He was excited to help. So he's a really good guy. That's cool. I mean, and he gives back to the community a lot too. So that's fun to be able to help a business that really invests back in the town as well. So that's awesome. That's a good that's fit. Awesome. One of well, the things uh, that, my, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, um, we, our charter was actually out at one of the other parks. Um, I don't remember what the name of the park was. I believe it you was on the North east side of. Northeast what was Park. it? Northeast, Northeast Park. Yeah. yeah. So I, I was going to come try to find you guys, but I ran out of time too. That's but I, all right. I, I had it on my radar. Well, You're, you know, you were, you were a little busy. We figured <laughs> you had something else to do. So that's yeah, okay. It was. I'm like, if I can get there. So. Um, but no, I was like the baseball diamond you have out there. At Northeast it's Park. A, it's incredible. I was like, wow, this is, you had really nice park facilities. I've got to say that. Yes. Uh, yeah. fantastic i mean it had that yeah. artificial i don't know what it's called um yeah, but the, just the all it's so it's an all that's that's pretty new it's called miracle field and it's a new um all-inclusive playground so all the playground equipment and then the field can you know so if there's kids in wheelchairs nice um, different needs 
that's what that's what that's for. So that just again, we had a family in town raise a ton of money and um, and just build that. So it's really nice and really. That was one of the one of the best pictures I took of all all Ragbri was up from that park because really? where we were there, well, there was a huge cornfield behind the park, uh-huh. and we left about five forty five. That was a century day. Oh. And, no. Yeah, it was a century. Yeah, yep, yes, it was. Yep. And then the sun came above the the corn just at the right area, and oh. it was like the iridescent orange, beautiful, beautiful photograph in the morning. There was also a morning where, because it was a century, and everybody was panicked, I got to get on the road, got to get on the road. <laughs> they left all of their luggage outside our charter semi truck, and I have a picture of that too. It's like picture a semi truck, and then picture like eight rows deep of semi trucks worth of baggage. And so I thought that was just one of those pictures, but uh, we, we highly enjoyed ourselves. Um, One of the things that I was really surprised at is, as the layout that you guys had, in my opinion, was great. It was, you had a Mm -hmm. long distance layout where people could just keep wandering down different, different areas. To to clarify, this was the layout of your celebration area. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. 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 That, that was something, you know, we, we debated back and forth too. Um, you know, where do you go? What do you do? There's not a lot of shade in that area. Um, and then again, with the numbers, not knowing exactly how many riders we were going to have. Um, we really, the last time I came through, our vendors didn't do well because they were off. And then the beer garden was over in another, I mean, it was right there, but you couldn't get a beer and go eat your food where this one you could you could have beer you could walk and kind of explore all the vendors and and see the different things so i'm I'm glad to hear you like that because uh it seemed really neat again i didn't even get a walk down to the vendor the vendor row because it was so busy um i ended up staying over by the info booth but uh it looked really cool yeah it was probably it was probably one of the best uh layouts Good. As far as Ragbri went, as far as I'm concerned, I, Adam might awesome. have a different opinion, but I it was just it flowed. Um, a lot of towns, you know, were limited on space and tried to yes. like jam it into a small area. So I mean, it's just bumper to bumper people, and the lines are going out into the crowd flows. But um, but the way you guys had it spread out, I mean, I think it was fantastic. Awesome. Wonderful. And, and- no, I, I would agree because I mean, while Storm Lake did a great job, if you remember when we went through the vendor area of Storm Lake, we were arm in arm knocking into different people trying to get through the crowd. And where you had it, it was wide open. As a matter of fact, I know there's probably somebody put a lot. Forgive me, I'm just going to be honest here. I'm sure someone put a lot of time into a map and everything. Well, I was just kind of, and I was just kind of wandering, and I kept looking. I go, oh, look at that, look at that. It keeps going. Let's go over there. Let's go over there. And truthfully, that's how we found your library. And because it was an extremely warm week weekend a bit warm evening excuse me um i'm like hey let's just see about the library we walked in there and um i guess when there's not rag bri there's a projector inside there (laughs) and and then just to give someone an idea what we're talking about picture a set of stairs but built at like five times the size and so there's just big massive like um uh, stair steps, blocks, building blocks up, and so you could just kind of sit and lay and watch a movie. I'm sure if, if Ragbri wasn't w- wouldn't have been there, and yeah. so there we were laying uh, laying down a little bit, sitting back, and all of a sudden, this is what we heard: in five minutes, the library closes, <laughs> and we were like, "No, no, 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 no that's not good." No. <laughs> so then, uh, truth be told, we visited your Walgreens and picked up some cold beverages, like. Gatorade because we were you know extremely warm and and then headed back to the park for a libation when we got back to the well that's perfect <laughs> so I have to ask did you get to um the distillery yes, yes. no actually um we had met we somebody die. in a green shirt because you had told us those were you know the people to yeah, help the people to go to and she looked at us and said I don't even think it's open. We think it's closed. And I was like, oh, okay. And so we did not, we had heard it was like, forgive me, but from where your location was downtown or that it was uh, across the street from Culver's, maybe two streets down and then like go four or five blocks down. And they had told us that it was closed to be honest. So, Oh no, he was was out. He had a tent out front and um, stones stones throw from Walgreens. Oh, Oh, we were right there. You got it. You were right there, man. (laughs) I hate to say it. Well, we just trusted that was. Maybe he was he was done that. I'm gonna hope that. So next time. 
Next we should time. have double checked our information. Oh well, Man. that's okay. That's, a, that's okay. Normally they are closed on Mondays, and I'm sure that's why that. Gotcha. That so, yeah. So, uh, the one of the biggest questions I had was, how did the table auction go? Um, not great. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, but you know, you know what? We got a lot of compliments on it. People loved them, but I think, um, how do you get them? That's what you need them to be with the logistics of that's okay because um they all got sold. Good. So that's that's a good thing. We thought maybe they would bring in a little more, but um with everything, we're very close to having all of our bills in and and we still came out um ahead making a profit. So yeah. Are you glad you joined the committee? What committee? Well, the committee for Ragbri. Are you glad that you? When oh, we first yeah. Spoke to oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I'm glad I joined the committee. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You, would, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, we in an earlier show we were able to interview uh, Katie, and 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 you kind of just signed up for like, oh, to see what this is all about. Are Are you glad that you made that first uh, move for that first meeting uh-huh. till today? Or, I mean, there was a month or six weeks in there that I thought, well, and my husband helped encourage me told you not to do it (laughs) yeah like i know i'm crazy this is it was a lot at times but honestly it was so fun and i find myself i haven't thought about it for a while but reflecting back and thinking okay next time we'll do this next time this and everyone on the committee's like no next time you'll do it (laughs) a couple of the people had this was their second go around and they're like this is on you next time but yeah i i think you know Looking, the last time they hosted was 2011, did I say, in Carroll? So it had been yeah, a long so. Where if you, in my mind, I'm like, well, now it's easy. Like, bring it back next year. I know exactly what we need to do. <laughs> you know, you kind of just have that method. And even if five years pass, things change. Um, a lot changed from 2011 to 2023. Um, technology, just the world we live in. I think in the next five years to 10 years, you know, hopefully we'll get it again and uh, it'll be easier. Well, make was... sure, make sure you write all those ideas down because you I know, you'll I remember know. them, but five, 10 years down the road, you'll be like, Oh, I had all these great ideas. And I don't remember. No, I don't them. remember them. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised so, my phone worked almost the entire time we were there. I did not have, you know, I, I, I had told my wife before leaving, um, I'll do my best to stay in touch with you. My phone worked. I mean, more more often than not, my phone worked. So there was just a few times where um, in different towns, not not in Carroll per se, yeah. but just in different towns. I mean, of course, Des Moines is a major city, and and you know we were in Ames, major city. We expected that, but there were just a few times when we got to east of uh, Des Moines. A couple times where I just lost it for just a little bit, but I was surprised. I mean, it was yeah. it was much better than I thought. So yeah, I would say day of there was just a few times where I. Couldn't send a text message, but it was for a brief, brief period. So, yeah, that that really surprised me. I was pleasantly surprised with that, for sure. Welcome to Untethered and Wanderwise, where adventure has no age limit. We're your co-host, Heidi Brandis and Nikki Mahundro, And we're here to inspire and celebrate women over 45 who are embracing their independence and want to explore the world on their own terms. So you started your day at 5 a.m. Here's a question I have. Did you make it to the pork tornadoes? I was at the pork tornadoes. I did make you it were. to the pork tornadoes. You uh, were? Okay. Yeah. yeah, so, and this is the other thing that was crazy, which Reg by Matt, everybody calls him Reg by Matt. You know, he got on stage at intermission, and I had talked to him um, before intermission of the pork tornadoes and he's like, I am giving everybody a stern warning. He's like the heat, the headwinds, like I, we need riders to behave and to get on the road because it was a big day Tuesday. Oh yeah. Going to be hot. Um, and riders listened. I really? mean, it, a lot of them left at intermission, honestly. Um, and by, let's see, I think they finished at Oh, 10, 10, 15, 10, 30. I'm trying to think. And our shuttles were, everyone was cleared out of there and done. I mean, right on there. And I think we spent an hour cleaning up and I was home at 1145. So 
There you go. There's our. Hey, there you there's go. Rig there's Rig Bright Matt. That's there's our man. Absolutely. There we go. You have Rig Bright Ann too. Did you guys know Ann? Yeah, Ann was was wonderful <laughs> to us. Uh, that night we actually felt like celebrities. So here's what happened: we were at the route announcement party, as as I'm sure people from your town were. Um, and it was a snowstorm, though. Remember, everyone, there, we had a couple. It, 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 not only was it a snowstorm, but holy macaroni, was it cold. And yep. and, and so Anne said, hey, this is where I want you to come, and this is when we can do the interview, and th- this time. And if you want to say one time in my life where I felt like a little bit of a celebrity, I'm like, oh, my gosh, we got this interview. And we went back to the hotel. We were excited and, and uh, made it over there and did the interview. And then I, believe it or not, I edited the interview while Michael was driving um, back to his hometown, sitting next to him, I have my headphones on and I'm interviewed. By that night, we had the interview up, and so um, yeah. it, it, it was. It was like my one celebrity, like woohoo, my cycling celebrity story. So we were we were pretty excited about that. So um, well, those two are those two are amazing, and oh yeah, they came through and followed up with us uh, last Tuesday or two weeks ago. Now I, my weeks get mixed up, but um. Just the amount of thought and foresight that they have of of where this ride is now, you know, and they said, obviously, 50, the 50th was a 50th. It's big. There was a huge turnout. Um, what to expect going forward? You know, they're just kind of thinking through things and how do we keep it growing yet manageable? And they just are so in tune and in touch and have great ideas of how to keep this going to make it easier on communities. Um, take some, you know, some burden off of our end. Like this year they did the concert series with, they took care of all of that financially Mm -hmm. and setting that up. And so they have other really good ideas of how to ease some of that, um, on our end. So I really look forward for things to come with them. And I think those two do a wonderful job. So and and I, I agree with you. And here's what I would like to say. So, of course, the Ragbri 50, I think what you had is a lot of people who had never been on something like this before. Their friends are like, this is the 50th anniversary. We're going to just go do this cool thing. And I think a lot of people had shell shock, like, oh, my gosh, the first couple of hills, they were probably like, what am I doing out here? When <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, 90 degrees outside and I'm baking out here on the on the tarmac, so to speak. Um so my question will be is moving forward, this is not just to, to Katie, but to anybody who ever thinks about doing Ragbri again, what happens at Ragbri 51, 52, 53, et cetera, et cetera? Um, obviously, the popularity of the 50 is not as much. Does does the popularity obviously go down? Does it go to pre-COVID, you know, pre-COVID numbers? Like, you know, the 10,000, do they go back to the lottery? These are questions that I kind of go back to myself is, I'm sure from a standpoint of selling, it's easier on November 15th or whatever to open it up and let people just sign up because then you get those guaranteed people who sign up. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'll be curious to see that in the future, what happens, honestly. So Yeah, and, yeah. and then that's one thing um, we actually brought up too in our meeting with them is like, so how do you do this? How do you know? Do you cut it off? Because I'm I'm looking at it from our town's perspective. We could handle it. Was it a stretch at, for different things? Yes. Um, but if you put the size of a ride in a smaller town, you're struggling. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how much of a smaller of a town could handle that. And so, you know, I talk about, do you, do you set a limit? And they're like, well, we could, but if people really want to go on the ride, they're going to go. Yeah, no true. So if you don't set that limit, you let people sign up. You're able to add amenities, provide more, you know, SAG, um, and get a better job of, get a better idea of who is coming on this ride. Um, so that's one thing we talk about. So I don't think they'll limit it, but, um, yeah, who know who knows? Like you said, 50 was 50. Yeah, hey, absolutely. I, I know that throughout the week, I promise you this, as a as a gentleman who rode all week long, the first day was some of the most insane amount of bicycles, bicyclists, um, whatever. I mean, wheelie bars, unicyclists, whatever that I'd ever seen anywhere at any time in my life. And throughout the week, you could physically see a diminishing number of people um, either – quitting early and of course i felt really bad for coralville i mean oh. a horrible 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 storm uh, where know. the tornado sirens are going off and and uh we actually got really really lucky that <laughs> night we we, did. Uh, we we came in 
and we came to where our charter had picked to camp or whoever picks it. I don't know, yeah. but somebody had picked it to be there. And we were in between like this apartment complex, um, like in the middle of this, like they called it green space and just like a dirt field with little, very little grass. And I was looking at Michael and Michael was looking at me and our other buddy had already set up his tent. He's a lot, big, stronger rider than we are. And, but we also like to enjoy the whole ride. So we stop and take pictures and, and take everything. And so, so here we were, I'm like, oh my gosh, this would be a great night to have a hotel. And so we're all looking at each other and Michael <laughs> goes to Expedia. Sorry, I'm going to slam Expedia here, but I'm just going to be yeah. honest here. Um, goes to Expedia and he finds a hotel and he says, guys, do we want to do this? Everybody's in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got Venmo. We're in. So he books the hotel. We throw all of our stuff onto the truck, the charter truck. Yep. My my buddy Joe un, uh, packs up his tent, packs up everything, and then we take our bikes and we ride it to this hotel that Expedia said that was available. We get into the lobby, oh. the storm is coming, <laughs> <laughs> and and the and the guy at the hotel, the gentleman behind the counter, says, "I'm so sorry, we don't have any rooms available, or woman, or whatever, but yeah. we don't we don't have any rooms available." So now, it the storm is coming, and all of our stuffs in the truck. And now we have our bikes and our backpacks on our back with one change of clothes for the next morning. And there's this guy in the lobby and he goes, are you guys really looking for a room? And we're like, yeah, actually we are. And he's like, well, I actually have one on the other side of town, which was by the Longhorn Steakhouse and everything else. And, and we are like, hey. okay, great. And so at first he said, and it was a little bit nerve wracking because the storm is coming. Remember yeah. he says, it's about 15 miles away or 15 minutes away or something like that. And so I'm, I'm looking while Michael is making the deal happen. I'm looking on my phone. I'm like, it's three miles away. We're cyclists. That's not 15 <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he this. rides his bike, but I know how I ride mine. And <laughs> yeah. especially if a storm is coming. I We're not that slow. We can, we no, can get there. Yeah. That's right. So long story short, we ended up getting a, a something I'd never even heard of, which was like, I think a days in plus or something like that. And okay. and I'm like, whatever, whatever it is, let's go. And within about eight minutes, we're there. And so we're like, you know what, we're going to go eat something. So why don't we all take showers? And so we, we, we take turns taking showers. We no longer get to the lobby. We're like, okay, let's go eat. And the doors open up. <laughs> so we ended up did we ended up make, making it to the Longhorn, but we got lucky that night. But I it, point is, I felt bad for Coralville. I mean, first of all, um, you know, band couldn't play, um, and I'm not sure. I, I've I've heard so many stories now from my friends where tents were being flown and broken. <laughs> and our our good friend had to sleep. Uh, Walter he had to sleep inside of the gymnasium, and so because uh, his tent was MIA, so. so. But, and uh, it happened early enough in the evenings that everybody had to go over to like the storm shelters and that type of thing. So yeah. a lot of people still hadn't eaten yet because they were going to eat when they go over and listen to the concert. And so, yeah, it was, we lucked out. Yeah, yeah. we did. We got lucky. You, do, you do feel bad for the, like, because if that happened to us, again, you think all that planning, every, everything that they did and the effort and energy they put in. And then it's like, well, Sorry, everybody's got to go in and take shelter, and yep. you don't sell the beer, and you don't have all the fun. So uh, that does stink for yeah. them. Party's closed. Everybody go home. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, but on a bigger piece, everybody was safe, so that's good. It yeah. could have been could have been a lot worse. So Matt Matt did say in our wrap up meeting, he goes, you know, if there was one town that I knew could handle it and be ready for it, he said it's Coralville because they've hosted it quite a bit. He's like they know what they're doing. And so he goes, you know, we, we work so hard and, and it's part of our planning and every town's planning is what is, what is the emergency storm protocol? And everybody's got it in place, but he's like, Matt. And he's like, in my short time doing it, I've never had to see it actually operate. And he goes, they did it right. So good, 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 good. Well, in 2018, we did have to evacuate our tent. So, yep. so we, we've, that? we've, we've been on that end where, you know, it's, I don't They're know coming around and made us go. I don't remember what town it was, but we had we to go were. to a to a facility or storm shelter. So uh, it, it was a electric company building, and we, we they opened their. I mean, they were phenomenal. They opened their offices for us, and we got in there. And uh, we, I remember we were playing hangman on the on, on the their, big whiteboard on, on the whiteboard. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, that's hey, that, those gonna... make good memories. That's right. Oh, absolutely. That's right. Well, well cool. from my standpoint, I just I, I personally thank you for, you know, spending a little bit of your time telling us a little bit aftermath and and uh so it sounds like you'd do it again, but you you'd like a little gap a little bit. So. A, a little break, yeah. A little break. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's yeah. good because I had talked to Adam and I was like, I just have this vision that, you know, <laughs> the day after there's like 50 townspeople in this big, you know, mound of trash. And they're out there with snow shovels, loading it into dumpsters and things like that. So uh, I'm glad to oh. hear that everything is not that way. So that's awesome. Oh, it's a, it's a huge, I will say it, it's a huge relief. You know, you can take a deep breath and be like, hey, we did this. And I will say our the people I've the writers super appreciative, super grateful, complimentary. Um, the people from our town, if they weren't on the planning committee, overall the feedback was really positive. And you know, that's always good to hear too, because we're trying to put on something that we think will be good and represent our town well. And uh so that, that was really nice to hear that people were proud of how it turned out and and they thought it went well so i i from i mean i'm i'm one of the uh kajillion billion writers and let me tell you i i was impressed i mean everything looked awesome to me so well thank you thank you so much that's awesome yeah we we definitely thank you for coming back on the show and, and giving us kind of a wrap up um definitely gives us the full perspective of of what it's like to be a host town both the planning and then the aftermath so I'm, I'm glad it's all worked out well and uh hopefully you have a couple of years before you have to uh to do this whole, whole thing again maybe next year i can ride there you go there you It'll go be a lot yeah. easier to find me when we'll have, we'll have more of the same goals in mind <laughs> that's right if i ride <laughs> finding I, I, that distillery would be at the top of my list i i guess i do have one curiosity question because when we first met you you um were gracious enough to share a, a holding up the Ragbari Bible per se. And yes. my question is, did you have to turn that back in or is that something that you got to keep? Oh no. Oh, there it oh. is. <laughs> oh, she's got it on her, on her office shelf here. Oh boy. Wow. Oh boy. It's there. Oh, yes. oh, nice. There Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, I see it myself. So. I wow. got the, awesome. uh, oh yeah. The Ragbari oh. beer. I love it. Big I beer. love it. I love it. And then a uh, big wave. Matt and Ann actually gave us a little uh, appreciation gift. This nice. Cool. Oh, cool. Nice. They gave all of us on our the overnight committees a kind of a paperweight. They said, put it on your desk. And anytime you think you can't do something because it's hard, look at that. And <laughs> a little inspiration. <laughs> and because what we just pulled off was awesome. So now I have a confession. I have one of those now, too. And what had oh, happened good. was, is <laughs> when the writers finished, if yes. you waited in the regular line for the tire dip, which yep. I did not, but uh, if you awesome. waited in the regular line, they were passing those out. We didn't know they were passing those out until we were driving home. And um, Michael uh, went to Kansas and my friend Joe and I came to Michigan and Joe's like, oh, man, we missed out on this. And he showed me. Well, just recently they emailed us all and said, if you want to buy one, you just had to pay for shipping. And so I said, well, you know what? I want the whole 50th experience. So five dollars. I, I have one, too, yeah. but I <laughs> but I did not work as hard as you did by putting uh, on. I, I don't know, because I would I would disagree because I went to Des Moines to Waterworks Park. I, I sent a set of keys in the lost and found and the lost and found travels with the ride. Okay. The guy from Carol was looking for his keys. I'm like, I know where they are. Okay. <laughs> it's like they're in the lost and found, but now they're in Des Moines. Well, I went down to Waterworks Park. So it was two days later. And the heat was yeah. Yeah, that impressive. Was, that was <laughs> I, a rough day. Yeah. I do not know how volunteers did it. I don't know how writers did it. I mean, you guys did the hard work, so <laughs> that that ride uh it was crazy but i the went outside one, and was just sweating and yeah minutes, so the one day um i mean just being truthful with you the one day that i just remember was michael was that like thursday or friday or whatever thursday when, thursday oh my gosh um 90 miles 
I mean, just coming into town, I mean, I had zero energy and, uh, and the heat was just coming from behind you on your back. And it was just like, oh my gosh. And, and then, you know, you think about it now, like, oh, well, I'm home. I'm fine now. But at the, at the time, it seemed like the, like the worst thing ever. So, <laughs> no, I, that, I, I cannot imagine. It, that just was, like I said, oppressive. It, <laughs> well, it, it, you know, that we didn't have that in Carol, thankfully. Nope. You know, nope. it was not that hot. I remember you saying to me that we're going to have um, a recovery ride coming into Carroll. I remember, I remember the first time you and I talked about that, and and sure enough, that was a beautiful day of riding. So um, it was, yeah. it was, it was fun coming in. We got in early. We got to enjoy Carroll. Well, we got to. Uh, a matter of fact, I I like to say we were some of the first people to actually eat at that pizza ranch. We came into yeah. town on the shuttle bus. And there was hardly nobody there. And and then as we were sitting in the back of Pizza Ranch, um, enjoying the air conditioning and ice yes. water and, and yes. repeatedly ice of water, and, uh, and all of a sudden, then, like, it started to fill up. We're like, okay, it's time to get out of here. And we're seeing when, this too. When, we, when we walked outside, we were like, whoa, where did everybody come from? <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. Um, it is. So. It's crazy how it just shows. It just all of a sudden, there it is. So. Yep. Well, cool. I, I'm, I'm so thankful. I really am. I, I, I'm, I know mm-hmm. I said it, but I, I really mean on behalf of Michael and myself. You know, we, we do this show for, for fun. We, we, we enjoy it, and we really have never talked to somebody and, and saw Ragbri from the uh, beginning stages. You know how you were chosen, and, and then put the committee together, and then the actual ride and then talking to someone afterwards. So I, from my, from me, and on behalf of Michael and I, I just yes. want to say thank you so much. So. Same, same to you guys. I, I actually, somebody's like, oh, I said, I have to go do a podcast tonight. And they're like, Ray Bray stuff, aren't you done with that? I was like, no, this is actually really fun. I was like, oh, good, good. <laughs> I'm going to do a podcast. And- good. I'm <laughs> glad that you, I'm glad you feel that way. Because sometimes, you know, people say, oh, you know, yeah, I'll be on your show or whatever. Uh, but this is fun for us. And I'm glad that you are. So thank you. Yeah, no, thank you guys for having me. So I do hope we get to meet in person someday and have a drink. So I would love it. Ray Bray, you better be texting me. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we what like- else we got, Adam? That's it. Well, that was really cool. You know, and I got to tell you, I, I'm i not surprised that the cyclists kept everything clean. I'm really not. I mean, you and I do these things a lot. Everyone we see, no matter what, when they're packing up, they're picking up all their garbage, throwing it away. So um, great to have her on again. That was really oh, yeah. fun. Well, you know, I always thought that, like I said in the interview with her, I always thought that cyclists were very respectful, you know, respective of that type of thing and worked hard to do it. But then I've never been in a town after Ragbri has been through to like really verify that that was correct. So I'm glad to hear we're not trashing up people's towns. A couple things I'll say. The fact that she was having lunch at 11 o'clock the next day and you could never tell that Ragbri had been there minus some signage. It just amazes me. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, okay, think about you and I as writers or any of our subscribers or followers that are writers. I mean, you spent weeks uh, uh, getting all your stuff ready and putting stuff in however you pack and however you do your things and figuring out your family plans like you. You you have children, so you got to make sure that, hey, you can't just leave. You can't leave your daughter in a closet. So you, you're set. I mean, wait a minute. Of play- I can't. Well, listen, you do you, buddy, but um, <laughs> I don't recommend that by any way, no, any fashion or form. And, and your daughter's so independent now that uh, she's going to not only, I think she'll flip the closet upside down. So, yeah, but, 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 um, you know, there's all kinds of things you had to plan, you know, you and your wife figuring mm-hmm. out, you know, childcare. And I mean, just the amount of things that you got to put together for rag bright. And then the next day she's having lunch, like, Hey, everybody's gone. So <laughs> it's just yeah, amazing. Was inc- incredible incredible well i think that for us i think that puts uh rag Bri in the in the books we've got the pre-planning we've got the route announcement forgive me we've got the route announcement we've got the pre-planning we we interviewed matt about it we actually interviewed katie before we did the ride we got to talk to someone from an area that rag Bri went after the ride i think that uh i think that that does rag right. We, we can close the books. Boom. All right. Boom. Closed. Excellent. 
Speaking of closed, I'm going to bring up something a little bit sad here for a minute. Thought about oh, you the no. other day. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, great. We're going to talk about something sad. I thought about Michael the other day. That's I did. Horrible. I did. Horrible. I mean, people don't know that we have a, a playlist that we kind of share. We call it the Cycling Man of Leisure playlist. Just songs mm-hmm. that we enjoy when we're hanging out. And many of those songs are jimmy buffett song so oh. uh, and 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 your your love of jimmy buffett and 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 of course i obviously enjoy the music as well jimmy buffett's performed with a numerous slew of thousands of people or whatever hundreds of people at least um and so when he passed i i thought about you and Sad i just want to say uh fins up to ends up buffett. to jimmy you know he's one of those people for me that you know you have a, a singer or songwriter or two or three that kind of create this album of your you know your youth and that well jimmy buffett was kind of that person for me that kind of created my my musical album so to speak of my uh my younger years and uh yeah it was really really sad to to see him or hear about him departing but uh his music will live on so I mean, think of the empire that this guy built because he's like, oh, I don't want to work. I'll just play some music. And I mean, he's got restaurants, timeshares, cruises, resorts, yeah. resorts senior living um, uh, areas. I don't know what you call it right now. I'm he's so got sorry. beer. Yeah. He's, I mean, land shark beer. And I mean, uh, tequila, ev- everything. Ev- everything. I mean, so. Um, and we always think about them because Lauren and I, as you know, have the timeshare in Florida. And so go to Universal a lot. My wife is a Harry Potter fan and, and we like to go to Universal and as well as Disney, don't get me wrong. But I mean, every time, you know, you pass, you got the plane on one side. And I always have to tell my wife the same story that I'm like, that is actually Jimmy Buffett's actual plane. That was one of his planes. And every time she's like, was it really, it looks like it's not real. I'm like, it's a real <laughs> plane. So, um, so he, he- Came along. I mean, he created a, a fantastic empire. Yeah. Uh, and it's really impressive because they did an interview with him for a few a few years back. And early in his career, uh, he kind of went through a countryish phase. It didn't really work out. And then he moved on uh, early in his career when he was making the video come Monday. He found somebody to shoot it. Didn't have any money. They needed a pickup truck for the for the, you know, some of the video. and All he had was like this $200 old, you know, Sanford and son style, you know, pickup truck. And so they used his old beat up pickup truck in the video because he couldn't afford to, you know, rent uh, a better one for the video. Right. And, you know, when he passed, he could probably buy several dozen dealerships. I I was going to say, yeah. yeah. So while watching some of the footage and where i thought that yes i brought up something sad and i'm sorry for that but uh while watching some of the footage i saw some of the last few images they have of him outside the man is covered head to toe um with sun protection including gloves including um arm legs sun i mean everything i mean it's just 100 protected and it, and it got me reading about after battling skin cancer for years before his death margaritaville singer jimmy buffett died 76 from merkel cell cancer a statement on his website revealed merkel cell uh carcinoma is a rare but aggressive form of skin cancer according to the skin cancer foundation so that's that's uh, uh cbs news quoted that but um so it got me thinking about what we like to do, which is cycling and being out in the sun and um, thinking about how I choose to wear sun arms and sun legs. Uh, is it, is this going to be another pushing me to get a Debrim? Listen, I mean, I have a Debrim and, and <laughs> if you want to be cool, I mean, you go to Debrim.com. That's D A B R I M M.com. And you get yourself one. Make sure it's fluorescent yellow. That is the official cycling men of leisure color of the brand, wow. which is fluorescent yellow. You can be seen miles away. I mean, listen. Now, I'm, I'm, unlike this year, Rag Bright, other years you've been able to find me. This year, everybody had a Debrim. So, yeah, a um, bright yellow Debrim. Actually. Bright yellow yeah. Debrim. And I, <laughs> I saw on the expo day how many Debrims were being sold. I'm like, we're in one Debrim nation, baby. We are here. So. Uh, no, I, I, te- I tease you about the Debrim, but 
there's a very important reason. Number one, you know, the sun protection. But sure. there's a very interesting story about why you wear that Debrem. Sure, sure, sure. I'll, I'll tell the story. So 2016, um, as we just talked about planning for Ragbri, part of my planning was I had this brainiac idea, never shaved my head before, uh, except for military school a little bit, but never shaved my head down to the level of this shaving my head. But for some reason, I think, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shave my head so I won't have as much hair and I'll stay cooler. <laughs> yeah that's a was, brilliant idea oh yeah it's brilliant all right i think chalk that up for him the big dummy because big, you look of, like you look like you had been attacked by a wolverine or a bear when it was over it was just stupid i mean talk about sanford and son you big dummy you big i mean dummy. So, i mean so i literally my helmet had these three or four I think it was five gaps, but three of them were definitely pointing straight up to the sun of, of air, you know, airflow vintage, ventilation to get through vintage. I don't think that's a word, but ventilation uh, to get through the top of my head. Well, it also meant that Mr. Sun, hello, I'm Mr. Sun, and I'm going to come burn you. Literally, by the end of the week, I literally look, if you look at what Michigan Wolverine helmet looks like, yep, that's what the top of my head looked, looked like. Looks like something had just grabbed you and just with its claws and it just pulled back but it's more than that i'm i have you know i have skin i have more freckles than anyone i know i can't mull along without coming in and saying hey i got more freckles so yes i have been a debrim wearer since rag bright 2016 i got burnt so bad not just on my head on my legs and my arms um it was since that day that i have uh, rarely been seen riding a bike without sun arms, sun legs, um, uh, to brim. Uh, I've, I've ridden many miles with you yeah. since 2016, hundreds, probably thousands. Yep. I've never seen you after 2016 without being protected. So I was so miserable. I literally coming home. I never thought I would do something like that again. Now, of course, now I've done 10% of the rag rise, but, um, at, <laughs> at, <laughs> but at the point, uh, I never thought I'd come back, but you know, the one thing I always forget, I hate to admit this. And usually the first week of August, I'm walking around Michigan going, Hey, my lips are peeling. Uh... I, never, I never put on lip balm. I don't, I mean, I packed it. I bought it. I've gone to the Rag Bright checklist and put it in my fanny pack or whatever. And I don't know. We get into town and we get something to drink and we, okay, let's go. Come on, let's go. And then like day five of the, of the, the brim, you know, the brim only goes from like the, the sun down to the brim, the brim down to the ground. The sun bounces off the old 1973 stamped uh, concrete. Cause let me tell you in Iowa, they would love to stamp their concrete when they report it in Michigan. We're like, yeah. Good luck, buddy, because we ain't, we ain't bringing it back. We're not putting a date on it. So, um, but it'll bounce off the concrete, and of course, I I pay the price. So, um, so you know that's that's interesting because as long as we've been riding, I mean, occasionally I'll forget to put sunscreen on my face or whatever. And I know you wear, um, you know, you wear the debrim, you wear the arm sleeves, you wear the leg sleeves, that type of thing. Um, I don't do a debrim, but I do do a skull cap because, yeah. you know, uh. I don't want to try to put sunscreen in my, in my hair. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that's important that you do it, but the other thing that's important, and I don't think a lot of people look at it is when they're buying these sleeves, are they just sleeves or do they have some kind of uh, protection in them? And I'm talking UPF protection. Yeah, I think I think the answer to your question is probably both. I mean, sometimes when you buy, if you if you were a fisherman, like you know, sports fisherman, you go, you know, you go to the store and you see right right on there, or you go to a um, um, water park, you'll see that it'll say like fifty SPF or fifty UVF or whatever right on there. Um, Amazon or the Jeff Bezos Space Company, as I like to call it, um, sometimes when you buy the Sun Arms. Clearly, it really reads right there, 50 SPF or, you know, 60 SPF or whatever. Um, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't mm -hmm. say anything, but, you know. Um, but that's important. Not, yeah, it is. Because the, the UPF, for people who don't know, UPF protection is ultraviolet protection factor. And what that does is it just gives you a percentage 
uh, and that percentage will basically tell you the amount of radiation that's reaching your skin. So it helps block out that radiation. So it's important. And the other problem that comes in and, you know, is that is typically going to cost a little bit more money. Sure. And, you know, I look at myself, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you know, 10, $15, I probably would be like, eh, I'll just get the cheap thing, that kind of stuff. Nowadays, I'm like, you know, I look out for these kind of things. Um, but I think it's important that when you're buying this stuff, it's like anything else in cycling, uh, you know, spend a little bit more money, get that extra protection. And I did find some interesting things about different things in cycling clothing that affect the UPF factor. And I thought I'd share those with you if you're interested. I am interested. Okay. First one is color. Darker and brighter. It's going to be better U, uh, UPF protection. Uh, browns, blacks, blues, and reds are really the best um, because they absorb that ultraviolet uh, rays better. And I think most people, when they think about that, they're like, black? I'm not wearing a black something outside. But actually, I do have sun arms that are black. And truthfully, when you're riding with them, if nobody... if if you're listening to this and you really enjoy riding and you're like, yeah, I've always thought about that, but I think they're, they'd be restricting. You don't even know they're there. Yeah. You really, you just don't. And, and I've started wearing them. You probably noticed I didn't used to wear them yep. generally in the morning. If it's a little chilly, I tend to like, think it's freezing. I've started wearing them. And then for that purpose, and then I just got to the point where I just leave them on for most of the day, because the other thing is, is if it's really hot that day, you can wet them down and it helps, you know, kind of lower that core temperature for a longer period of time. The second thing is fit. And if you really think about this one, it makes sense. Looser threads offer better protection. Typically in cycling, you know, a lot of people like to have the really tight stuff. Well, all that's doing is stretching the fibers of the fabric, which causes it the sun to be able to penetrate it better. So a little I bit looser is better. I definitely agree on the fit. And I'll tell you why, you know, you and I usually try to work with, um, in this case, we went to rag Bride with Joe and we usually tried to work together on, Hey, what are we going to wear Jersey wise, mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes we've done like the cycling men of leisure Jersey. Sometimes we we've done, you know, rides we've done before. Anyways, the point is we decided this year on the military appreciation day that we really thought that the 2018 Eagle jersey, Screaming Eagle, Screaming Eagle, was was appropriate, and that jersey has short arms, and mm -hmm. so on that jersey, for me at least, it has short arms. I don't know, maybe I, I don't know, maybe just for me it was short. <laughs> it's, but, it's got short arms. For, but the point is, is I tried to pull my arm sleeves up so that that area between the bottom of my arm wouldn't be exposed to the sun as I was riding my bike and have my hand on the horns and stuff. And so I decided I want to pull that arm sleeve up all day long. I kept making sure and it was really tight. Well, not only did I leave a little spot open, but it ended up actually giving me like a little wear blister. And so I think you're right. I think I think the, the size and, and wearing the right size of something is, is extremely important. So. And the third thing you really got to look for is the fabric. Fabric does make a huge difference. Uh, more dense uh, and tightly manufactured threads actually uh, create a better protection. So basically synthetics and semi-synthetic fibers, uh, that's going to be things like your polyester, uh, your Lycra, your Coolmax are all going to be really good choices for that. Um, obviously, stay away from the cottons. The cottons are the worst. Don't, you yeah. know. No, I'm telling the yeah. cotton people would not appreciate you well, saying that. Right? I apologize to the cotton, you know, uh, the fabric of our life. Yeah, exactly. Fabric of the, whatever their organization is that promotes cotton. Those are great to wear when you're hanging out or whatever, but for performance wise, cotton is not the way to go. So, you know, wear the sunscreen, wear the lip balm, get glasses, make sure they have provide that uh, UV protection. Uh, and the other final thing I'll leave you with, is when you're putting on the sunscreen, and I see people do this all the time, they, you know, generally are standing up, they put on sunscreen, and then, you know, they might go right under the edge of their shorts, and then they sit down, and their shorts, bicycle shorts, go two up, two inches higher. Yeah. And so, they have a tan, but then they've got this inch and a half of burned leg because their shorts came up higher than where they applied the sunscreen. So. Hey, that is a good look. I mean, you got the, the, the <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So, so, you know, in honor of, of Jimmy Buffett and, and all of that, we don't want anybody to get skin cancer. So we're just giving you some, some things to keep in mind when you're buying uh, some new uh, cycling gear. 
So you what? What I just heard you say was, in honor of Jimmy Buffett, you're going to buy a Debrim. No, that's exactly no, what no. I heard. No, yes, that's, that's what I heard. What I heard. Yeah, www.debrim.com. D a b r i m m dot com. That's what had, I heard you saying. Adam and I have had this discussion many, many, many times. I cannot pull off the Debrim. I am oh not a gosh. Debrim guy. Oh my gosh! No, I mean it takes a certain guy to be able to pull it off. I can't do it. You know, I mean, it's just like a lot of guys out there can wear kilts. I can't do the kilt. I can't pull it off. It won't work for me. Well, all right. I will wear the Hawaiian shirts, though. You know, I love those. But I'll pass on the Debrim. UPF 50 plus sun protection at Debrim.com. D-A-B-R-I-M.com. Stay cool and ride longer. Uh, Listen, I'm not sponsored, but I I was going to say, are you being paid now by Debrim? And I didn't know about it. No, but if someone from Debrim is listening to this and you want me to push the Debrim on a regular basis, I'm sure you can message us at the show. So You know, I've, I've re- got 50,000 pictures of Adam with his Debrim on. I, I'll send them out to you. You know, I, uh, I'm i not afraid. So, uh, But all right, you don't want to be cool and get yourself a Debrim. Hey, there is a guy on here who's repelling with a Debrim on the website. So, I mean, this is not just oh, a cycling it's not- apparatus. It's not just for cyclists. No, it should, that should be their slogan or something. To brim. There's, there's guys on horses wearing them. There's people that's, cycling. Uh, that's what a cowboy hat's for. <laughs> there's somebody that says workplace sun safety. Looks like they're putting it around their hard helmet. But you know what they have here? And I'm, I've only seen this a couple of times. I always forget about it. Is mine is a full to brim. I mean, I'm rocking a full to brim. But yes. this one looks like a baseball cap to brim. Oh, I've seen that where it's just like the bill of the hat in the yep. front. Would you be willing to wear that in honor of Jimmy? God, I love Jimmy. I just, I, I, the look just doesn't work for me. It really doesn't. So, all right. I'm just kidding. What's next for us? Uh, what? Two weeks. We'll two be weeks. in Kentucky yep. riding the bourbon country burn. Looking forward to that. We're Seeing a, lot a lot of, of our uh, friends. a lot of our friends uh, are scheduled to be there and we have some, Prior to the event, we're going to be uh, getting out there a day or two early, and we've got some distillery tours we're doing on our own. Yeah, I and think, uh, I think that would be good for for our subscribers, listeners, followers. Um, I think they might enjoy that. Well, I think we should yeah, do some we'll, recording. We'll do some recording places. out there. Yeah, uh, we'll get to to hook up with uh, with Phil. Yes, who was on our show last uh, or on our last show, which was a, a great great show. So we'll get to to meet back up with him. And uh, should be a good ride. I'm hoping, hoping the trees will be turning about that time. That would be awesome. I mean, get some I, foliage going. Last year, the first day we went out, it was just absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately, we, because we were there and we had driven so long, we went out and 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 did the ride. But man, though, if you remember, that wind was whew, that was whipping. So yeah, um, I'm hoping we have good weather and and really looking forward to seeing a lot of our friends and and. Um, just getting to see you in person in 3D. I mean, I, I, no one knows this. We do the show on Zoom if we're not in person, so I can see you on a 2D monitor. But uh, 3D would be a you know, be a lot better. Michael so. 3D experience. Got to got to get that. Now be careful. He tried that at Captain EO at Epcot, and then they took <laughs> that away. So you might want to be careful what yeah. you say there. So, <laughs> all right, different Michael, different Michael. So, uh, well, great. Listen, um. You know, I know that uh, we always end the show in a special way, so I think we should do that now. Uh, yeah, exactly. Let's let's bring uh, let's bring back our guest. All right, here we to, go to end out the show. Sounds good. Let's go play now. now. The only thing I would say is if if, if Katie, what would, if you were with us, you know what we would always say. What would we say? It's a great day for a bike ride. Thank you Absolutely. so very much. Excellent. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming along with Adam and Michael on Road Adventures with Cycling Men of Leisure. If you have enjoyed this, please subscribe to the show on the podcast app of your choice. Hey, Adam. 
Yeah. You know, what do you like about the show? What What's that one one thing or two things that you really enjoy about our show? Hmm. I love hearing from all of the listeners who take the time to write me because mm-hmm. so far they've all been positive. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe if they were like, you suck. I, I wouldn't like it as much, but I love to hear from people who say that they love the show and please don't stop and keep doing it. Yeah, exactly. I love that too. So what I'd love to do is I'd just love to invite our listeners to uh, send in their ideas, uh, their cycling stories, program suggestions, ideas about subject matter, um, rides we should look into, anything like that. I'm saying send that in to us. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to incorporate some of those ideas and stories into our podcast. I think that sounds wonderful. 